Hey friends, how are you guys doing today? I hope you're doing so, so well. And I am very excited to be bringing you guys another Poshmark tips video. So if you haven't seen my first Poshmark tips video, I will link that up above. As most of you guys might know, I am a part-time reseller on the platform Poshmark. I also resell on Mercari and sometimes eBay as well. So I like to cross post a lot of things and I am a thrifter. I love to go out thrifting. I go to the bins quite often. I find amazing pieces and then I resell them on Poshmark or those other platforms for profit. So I so in love doing this. I love how what it does to help keep our planet clean. I love reusing pieces and finding pieces that genuinely bring other people joy. And so I'm really excited to help other people do the same thing. If you are interested in listing things on Poshmark, if you already are on Poshmark, but you're just looking for some other tips and tricks to do even better reselling, then you're in the right place because we're gonna go over 10 different tips I have to help you increase your Poshmark sales. My husband and I are both resellers, part-time resellers together, and we love doing this. So we wanna definitely help other people learn how to do the same thing. So I hope these 10 tips will help you guys learn a little bit more about some tips and tricks that we have to reselling more items and for more money. Buckle up, put on your seatbelts. We're gonna go on a Poshmark tips ride. And also I always have my trusty golden doodle Otis with me for my videos. He is such a good helper. He's feeling a little sick though today. So he is gonna just be chilling on the couch with me while I'm talking to you guys. So Odie, go ahead and lay back down you poor baby. He will be here. If you can't see him, it's cause he blends in with the couch. <laughs> Tip number one, when you are reselling something on Poshmark, it is to have the best lighting possible. So you wanna make sure that you are taking photos at a good time of day. Jeremy and I usually aim for early afternoon because where we live here in Maryland, that's when our lighting is the best coming through our windows. So we like to take pictures at the optimal time for the sun, like to be hitting them, but we also take pictures on a white background. We do flat lays. Some people do ones that are hanging, but we like to lay something out flat on our bed that has a white bedspread. We take our pictures on that. And I would highly suggest if you do not have a ring light or box lights, they are a really good investment. I personally have two box lights. I use them here for filming as well. I have one directly right here. You can see the reflection in my glasses. Our apartment doesn't have that great of lighting and with Poshmark pictures, lighting is so, so important. So our first tip would be use better lighting. If you guys have great lighting and you don't need an extra source, then that is great. Good for you. We do not have any overhead lights in our apartment. So box lights and a ring light, we have both. They are a must. Poshmark tip number two is to use a consistent background. So for a lot of people like me even, I have some pictures from way back when I started Poshmark when I was just selling some random things from my closet where I would take some pictures here, take some pictures there, I'd take some pictures on the floor, some pieces were on my bed, some things I would hang. But that can be really scattering to the eye and the brain when you're looking through somebody's closet. If you're a buyer, when you are on a website for any actual retail store, they have a consistent background so it's not jarring your mind all over the place. Typically it's a white background. So if you can make a white background for the listings that you have, it'll look much cleaner to the eye as you're scrolling through. So if you have a white background, a blanket, a sheet, if you can take all of your pictures with that, I highly suggest it. And we also, this is kind of a two for one, we use the Photo Room app. So Photo Room is a photo editing app on my phone, on Jeremy's phone where it will take a photo and just white out the background for you. And almost all the time, it will do it automatically. You don't have to fiddle or anything. It's super easy to use. You just upload a picture that you've taken already. So after we finish taking lots of pictures of all of our pieces that we're gonna be selling, and then I take the picture that is the cover shot for each of the items and I just white out the background. So that way when you scroll through my Poshmark closet, it looks very crisp and clean. So that is a huge thing and Photo Room is actually free. So I would highly suggest you download the app. It is very good, it is very nice to use. I don't pay anything for it. And it really does make my pictures look better. Sometimes I'll have to go in manually and just erase a few little things with my finger, but it's really easy to use. And it made a huge difference in my listings and also in my sales. So if you wanna make better sales, I would suggest trying it out, why not? <laughs> Tip number three is to price your pieces right and to offer very quickly. So for Jeremy and I, we like to hit a few different certain numbers. If we are going to be putting something up for sale, usually we will lean towards pricing it up rather than putting it up for a discount. We have found that most people will not buy something outright. They will always offer lower than what you've priced or you will have to send them an offer for a lower price plus a shipping discount. 
So in order to actually sell something for what we want to sell it for, we know that we have to list it at least 10% above what we want to sell it for because we're going to have to offer that to our buyers. So in order to do that, if we're on the fence, we always price up and the prices that we like to hit are 25, 50, 100, and we haven't really gone too far over 100. If you hit those specific price points, those are the most helpful price points for you to sell your clothes because they hit the most audiences. So if you know anything about Poshmark, there's a filter feature on Poshmark where you can filter by price. So you can select these different price ranges. You can go zero to 25, 25 to 50, 50 to 100, and so on and so forth. So if you price your piece at $25, then not only will you fit in the zero to 25 price range, you'll also fit in the 25 to 50 price range. So therefore, instead of somebody automatically filtering out your little price point, you get two price points for one. So you have two ranges that you're drawing people in from if they are using that tool, and a lot of people do. And the same thing is true for 50. If you hit that 50 point, then you'll hit everybody that's searching 100 to $50 and then 50 to $25. So it's really a great price point to try to list your pieces at if they are about the right price. If you think you're gonna list something for $45, never list something for $45, list it for $50 because you'll hit so many more people that way. So listing things at the right price is very important. You also wanna send offers to your likers as soon as humanly possible. So if somebody is going through and liking your pieces or somebody just throws in a random like here or there, I am almost always on my phone ready for those notifications to come in because I like to send an offer as soon as they do it because your piece is fresh on their mind. They're already probably on your page and that little trigger, a little just reminder that your piece, oh, now it's cheaper, might be the little trigger that it takes to get them to purchase your item. So that's a nice little reminder and doing it as quickly as possible just means that it comes close enough to when they first see it and like, oh, I want that piece so that you are more likely to make a sale. Tip number four sort of comes down to preferences, but I would say it is a great idea to use stock photos. Now, a stock photo is the picture that a company actually took of the piece when they were originally selling it. So those pieces look really good. They use really great lighting. They have a great camera. Some of us don't have a great camera to take our pictures with. We do the best we can. But if your piece is new enough or is new with tags, then I would highly suggest trying to find its stock photo. Sometimes it's just as easy as doing a simple Google search saying, oh, I wanna find this J. Crew palm tree leaf sweater. That's how I found the stock photo for one of my pieces that I just sold. And that stock photo looks really good compared to home photography, in my opinion. It also gives people more of a, an inkling that they're shopping like they would be on a retail site. And that's the kind of vibe we want. We want people to feel like they are actually shopping at a legit business. That's what you want to be communicating to the people that are buying from you. You don't want to look sketchy. You don't want to look shady, but having some stock photos can really improve your listings looks. Now, if your piece is very used or in bad condition or just like, not the creme de la creme, I would not suggest using a stock photo. You do not want to mislead your buyer. You don't want to go down that rabbit trail where they think that they're getting something, but they're not getting that because it's in terrible condition. But if your item is in really good condition, it can be totally worth it. Tip number five is to clean up your clothes before you sell them. Whether that is just simply washing and drying them, that helps with a lot of wrinkles because wrinkles do not help you take a good picture. But also it could be something like if you have a leather jacket, maybe you don't have to go out and get it dry clean, but if you have some disinfectant laundry spray, like I have some for pieces that are dry clean only that I use for my personal closet, even just giving things a nice spritz, making them smell better, making them feel more fresh, if you can iron things, that is always good. It shows that you take pride in your business and people like to get really nice, nicely pressed, nice clean clothes when they get things in the mail. Along with just cleaning your products is using a fabric shaver. This is the biggest tool Jeremy and I probably use in our reselling business. They're called fabric shavers or fabric defuzzers. We have all had pilling on our clothes before on sweaters, on the inside of legs of like leggings. Pilling is a big issue, but it's so easily fixed. We have a fabric shaver and it just goes along and shaves off all the pills and that can really transform an item. It makes it look a lot newer, makes it look like it's in a great condition 
and honestly a lot of people this are in great condition it's just underneath all that pilling so getting off that pilling is a huge 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 tip and that fits right in with cleaning up your clothes tip number six is to share 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 sharing your own items is so important to your sales because how Poshmark works is so if you are looking for a specific brand that's what majority of people are probably doing on Poshmark they love one specific brand so they're gonna look through those pieces now the pieces that they will see first are the pieces that were shared the most recently oh it's okay baby am I sitting on your tail it's okay they could have just now listed the piece and it would be at the top but you don't have to just now list a piece in order for it to be at the top you just have to hit the share button, which is time consuming. You have to do it individually for all of your pieces. You can't just share your entire closet, but this is the biggest and best way to get sales is by sharing your pieces. I would suggest sharing at least two or three times a day. As soon as I wake up, I share my closet one time. I share my closet usually at least once in the afternoon. I try to hit seven o'clock because that's a hot traffic time as well. I share my closet then. And then I would hit at least one posh party during the day. There's posh parties at noon. There's one I think at eight maybe. And there's a 10 o'clock PM one. So I hit the 10 o'clock PM one. I just do that one because that one includes every single brand. And so I like to just share my entire closet again. But I definitely suggest sharing at least to one posh party because when you share things you automatically will get likes as you're sharing because things are at the top of people's feeds they're gonna see them so that is definitely a great tip if you are not sharing your closet consistently then you need to start now tip number seven is to provide excellent customer service now this is something i struggle with sometimes on poshmark because in my experience i get a lot of people asking for measurements of items and Again, in my experience, I have never once sold an item that somebody has asked me for measurements for. It just usually doesn't pay off for me, my baby. When I say provide excellent customer service, I think that it is more about answering people's questions, but also just making sure that you're constantly on the app so that way you can see as comments come in. Making sure you're answering people's questions is super important, even if they sound a little silly, even if it's just like, is this in good condition? In, in the description you sent four times, it's in good condition. It's just making, or oh my gosh, when people say, is this still available? Like, of course it's available, it's for sale. Just responding to them anyway and responding in a kind manner, as well as when you ship out your pieces, it is super nice to include a kind handwritten note. Me personally, I don't like to include other pieces of paper in my packaging. I just feel like it is, um, for me, a waste of resources and they're just gonna go straight to the trash. So instead of adding more to the waste system and contributing more trash, I just make cute little notes on the boxes. I already have to send out a box, so instead of just sending out a plain box and then including something inside the box, I like to take Sharpies and actually write notes to my buyers on the box. Even if you have another creative idea, doing something little that sets you apart is very important. Tip number eight is to follow a lot of people. It doesn't hurt you at all on Poshmark to follow people. And there are thousands of people that are on the app. There's tons and tons of people on the Poshmark app and when somebody follows you, you get a notification. So even if nothing comes of it, they will at least have seen your name one time pop up into their notifications if you have followed them. So it's something easy to do, especially if somebody new has come and liked some of my listings. Not only will I send them an offer right away on those pieces or bundle those pieces for them and then send them an offer, I will also follow them because that's just one more notification they're getting with my name on it that will make them think of my closet, will make them think of my items. So that's a quick and easy tip, especially for people that are liking your items. If you are a seller, then I would highly suggest following them back. Even if you don't see their items when they share them, it's just an easy step to get them to see your name once more. Tip number nine is to curate your listings. There's a few different ways that this can happen. I have seen people curate their listings into different brands being all together by sharing things that are all in the same brand right next to each other. You can make your closet divided by brands. You can divide up your closet by size, by sharing all of the size smalls at the same time, then going through and sharing all the size mediums and so on and so forth for shoes as well. So you can do that and that makes it easy for people to bundle items if they want more than one piece. I've seen that, I personally don't do that. I curate my closet in the way that I make it as visually appealing as I can towards the top of my page. For me, that just makes sense because I might have people coming to my Poshmark closet from my YouTube. So I want the first things that they see to be really cute items. Oftentimes they are the pieces that I have just now listed because 
pieces that are new will go at the top of my page, but I will also always try to make sure that the first four pieces that are at the top of my closet, which are gonna be the pieces that everybody is gonna see first, I try to make sure that those ones are always cute and well taken pictures. So I will purposefully share my cutest items to the top of my closet just to make sure that my closet looks as visually appealing as possible. And again, doesn't create any more barriers for people to want to visit my store. Because sometimes if you have something that's crude or just like a little uglier at the top, people might think, oh, I don't want to look through the rest of their closet because the rest of the stuff is just going to be like the top. But on the other hand, if everything at the top of your page is really cute, it's gonna make somebody wanna scroll for hours through all of your listings. I think it's totally worth it and you can curate your closet however fits best with your selling method. Tip number 10 is simple, but it is list more. Now, I know that that can be a hard thing to do because listing more requires you buying more items unless people are nice and give you items to list or you can get things at a super cheap rate. But the more pieces you have in your closet, the more potential you have for somebody to stumble across your closet and find things that they wanna buy. Because with only 40 pieces, you're gonna only hit a certain amount of people with, with people's preferences. Not everybody's gonna like the same piece, but the more items you have, the more likely you are going to hit more than one person's preference. Oh, you don't leave. <laughs> and since we are selling things to more people than just ourselves, it's going to be hard to find only pieces that you personally like and sell those unless you have a very wide audience made up of very similar individuals. Most of us do not have that. Most of us have a varied audience. We're gonna have people from different age brackets, different demographics, different socioeconomic scales. So we wanna make sure we have pieces that are one, at different price points, and two, that are in different styles completely because we wanna hit as many people groups, as many different types of people as possible. And the best way to do that is just to list more. Listing more items, listing varied items will definitely help increase your sales. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed just watching these quick tips on ways to increase your Poshmark sales. Even if you're not selling on Poshmark, I love watching these sorts of videos in general. I just like to learn and I hope you guys enjoyed learning with me today. Or maybe you guys already knew these things. Make sure you guys leave a comment down below letting me know what your best tip is for reselling on Poshmark, how you increase your sales, or the things if you're not a seller, if you're a buyer, What's your favorite thing that you see when you go into somebody's closet? If you guys liked today's video, then make sure you please smash the like button down below, destroy the like button. And if you are not already subscribed to my channel, I would absolutely love it if you guys would hit that subscribe button because about 60% of you guys that are watching this are not subscribed. And I wanna hit 1000 subscribers by June. My birthday's in June. And it's gonna be the best birthday present I can get. So if you guys like today's video, if you guys like following along on my thrifting and reselling journey, I would love to have you here and to join this friend group. I am so thankful for each and every one of you guys. I love you guys all so, so much. And until the next video, bye.